Got it. I'll do all the comments today. Okay. I can see it all, though. Good, Good morning. morning. I can see you. Hey, welcome to Morning Minutes, episode 287, I believe. Life after settlement. There's always a lot of talk with myself, Michael Berger, Mark Novak. There's always a lot of talk about before settlement, marketing, uh, negotiating, buyers, exchanging contracts. But once a deal has exchanged, there's not much talk, is there? No. It's, you know, it's almost, it goes into the abyss and unless you're actually the purchaser or the seller, you actually wouldn't know what happens in that period between when that sold sticker hits the board to when the purchaser gets the keys. What happens in that mystery abyss period? Yeah, so let's, so let's go, to put, let's go on 10% deposits paid is unconditional. Why yeah. does some what 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 does a buyer do in that time? Because some buyers always come to us and be like, "Oh, we want a four week. We can do a two week settlement. We're going to do a six week settlement, a twelve week settlement." Like, what are they doing in that time? Okay, well, the settlement period is the period that it actually takes um, to so when you sign the contract and pay the deposit to when you actually get the keys. That's called a settlement period. So everyone's signed, everyone's locked in, and it now goes to settle. Um, that's that period, yeah? Yeah, just let me put on Novak Properties. Just you talk about that while I just put a link up because it's only going to mine and your personal. So you just give me two secs. Okay. Now, guys, with, with that with that settlement period, as an owner, basically what you do is is not a lot. Um, you start well, you start packing your house, you start getting everything ready, you organise where you're going. Now, as an owner, you may not have purchased, and obviously there's a bit of pressure there because you've got to go out and find somewhere. Um, so pretty much packing as an owner is the only thing you've really got to get done. As a purchase, and also, actually, one other thing, you've got to inform your outgoing bank. So the bank that's actually yeah. you've got the mortgage with, you've actually got to let them know that rid of that mortgage it's called a discharge of mortgage so you've got to notify the banks that you're going to be doing that um now as a purchaser you've got to notify your banks or you probably already have got your finance approval so they know that there's a mortgage coming on board so that that's the notification there that approval period and then as a purchaser um you've obviously got to there's obviously logistics moving but prior to settlement which normally happens the day of settlement or the day before settlement you do an inspection called a pre-settlement inspection now the pre-settlement inspection is super important it's basically asking the buyer is this property as you inspected it and what you expect that you purchased and then sometimes there can be answers in that, in that pre-settlement for example michael yeah so pre-settlement the inspections they make sure all the rubbish is removed is a big one uh, and the property is as you've seen it is that what you said with pre-settlement? Pardon? Oh, sorry, I've got a really bad line with you, mate. I'll just, yeah, forget. It's not, it's not island, actually, my, my headset. Oh, okay. Um, out a little bit. Yeah, so a big thing with pre-settlement, you normally do it as well uh, the day before or a very close to the actual settlement period because you don't want to be inspecting the property four weeks before you settle. One, the client may still be living there, uh, and two, they've actually got up until the day before. So you normally do it as close to when you have to settle to make sure it's immaculate as well. A big thing is to check is basically the rubbish and the cleanliness of the property as well is, is very key and make sure that things haven't been taken out, which should be there. For example, you may have bought it with the dishwasher in the property. You want to make sure the dishwasher is still there. Basically, whatever's agreed. And you made a good point there, Mark, just with the settlement and discharging of banks, because a lot of people don't know. Like, for example, you may get a buyer saying, we're buying it all cash. I want to settle in one week. Now, as much as that sounds good, the seller may not be able to do that because they have a loan on a property. And when you have the loan on the property, you do have to notify the banks and that itself can take a week or two so even if you have a buyer who wants to settle straight away you may not be able to 
However, if you've got to settle a buyer with all cash and you've got no debt on the property, then that can be really desirable to do a short settlement because you don't need to work with the banks. Isn't that right? So a settlement, a settlement's normally six weeks. A long settlement's maybe 20 weeks from exchange to you getting the keys. A, uh, the fastest settlement you can do is literally next day. But that normally means there's not a bank involved for the, from on the purchaser's behalf and there's not a bank involved on the seller's behalf. And then that means literally from when you sign and the sold goes up on the board, the purchaser can get the keys the next day. Very rare, but possible. Yes. Now, what are some examples why a buyer would want a short settlement or a long settlement and why a seller would like a short settlement and a long settlement? What do you see that comes up? Well, buyers sometimes don't have finance approved. They're, they're almost 99.9% .9 confident that their approval is coming through, but they just need time to get that approval organised. Uh, that'd be one way. That'd be one, one thing for a purchase so, to have a settlement. That would be pre-approval. They've got pre. They're not buying it without ever talking to a bank. They've got pre-approval, and that normally relies on subject to evaluation done yeah. after like, when they've exchanged. So that's very common. That's not sort of going in with your eyes closed. They've done a month or two weeks of applications. The bank said this, and they just need that final tick, which mo I, you rarely see it a bank knock down a property or a, a sale if they have pre-approval at 700, they buy at 700 and the property is worth 700. So that's pretty standard. Yep. Cool, what's and, next? And I guess for a seller, the reason for a long settlement is they haven't found anywhere to buy. So a seller will often just ask for a really long settlement period. So once they've sold, give them 20 weeks or 16 weeks and they've got time to find something, buy something, negotiate and something, do all the relevant inspections, get finance approval, exchange and then settle within that period. So sometimes, um, you know, what's really popular with settlement, a reducible settlement on request by the by the vendor only. So yeah. that normally takes a lot of stress away from our clients. Do you want to explain that? Yeah, so a big, you're very, because a lot of people, there's that whole, we can do a whole nother episode on buying or selling first, but let's say you've sold first, you know how much you got to spend, yep. you buy, but you've, do, you've done a 20 week settlement and let's say you need the money from that settlement to settle on the new property. So going in there saying I can, if we're doing a, as long as 20 weeks, but if I find somewhere in the first four weeks, I can activate settlement. So instead of being 20 weeks, we do it in five weeks, maybe with a, a week's notice. That means the buyer can settle on the property they've sold, take out or get the whole $1 million. Then the following day, they settle on the new property with that million dollars and they move in. It takes away a lot of the stress because there's nothing worse than doing a settlement, let's say six weeks, and you can't move into your new property for two weeks. Where are you yeah. going to live for two weeks? Do you have to Airbnb? That is, the, I think that is the worst case scenario for anyone who has sold and has not bought. And the way to get around that is a long settlement that you can reduce. You do not want to leave yourself homeless. I've seen people do that and they've, they've done it. And they've, let's say, I remember one, I had a DY unit for some reason, like, they went against that recommendation, but basically, long story short, they had to Airbnb for two weeks and that it cost them like four or five grand because they had to get their stuff out, they had to store it, they had to Airbnb during summer It was because they couldn't move into the new property. It was terrible. It can go really bad, Mark. Yeah, look, it's the scariest thing for a seller, that's for sure. And I think everyone's got, we've all got to be really conscious about that. Selling your property, it's like, where the hell am I going to live? And what am I going to do and how am I going to buy something? I do have to say out of all the deals we do, um, people never end up high and dry on the street. There's always, wherever there's a will, there's a way. It just always works itself out. So I know that Airbnb example you gave, I've, I've had clients do that and they look at it like a holiday. They actually yeah. actually take a holiday and they go, you know what, we're going to actually go somewhere. We, I've even had people go, even though we're northern beaches, they'll still go to Manly and say, look, we're going to stay in a sick apartment for two weeks and pretend it's a holiday. So, you know, it does. It's it's never really. It's it's the it's much the concept is much more scarier than the reality with um, settling on a property and, and potentially being out of a home. People always suss it out. It always just works out. 
Yeah, and the, and you know what? They're the little things that a great agent brings to the table. Having the settlement right for you, having yeah. uh, maybe a deposit deal right for you, which we can talk about release the deposits on another another session. Um, yep. Because I think the main point of today's topic, and if you're just tuning in or re-watching it, was just to talk about settlements. Because I know a lot of owners, when we're negotiating a deal, they're like, why does the buyer need eight weeks? Why does the buyer want four weeks? Like, why? What are they doing in this period? Um, yep. to that like a seller once is because to get to to get your property on the market could be a, a one-year journey emotional back and forth do we sell where do we go and sort of once you've got that buy you sort of just want to rip the band-aid in and out off to the new life that you're wanting to start so I think that's a big thing when it comes to settlements and they can make and break a deal sometimes an owner will choose a lower hey Brad Ferguson uh, sometimes yeah. an owner will choose a lower price to sell their property if the settlement works for them it, with flexibility and length. Like it may sound crazy, but it is powerful stuff. So you you need to know it. Your agent needs to know it. And you know what? I think people got to, um, you sort of got to remove yourself a little bit once you've, when you're selling a property or when you're buying a property, you, most of that process is actually a free po a free process that you can back out of at any time. And I think when you remember that, it makes you a much cooler cat until you've actually engaged into selling. There's, and if you decide not to sell, there's generally no charge. Do you know what I mean? The agent's not gonna whack you for a fee. Uh, as a buyer, there's generally no charge if you if you pull out, unless you signed a contract on a, obviously it's an obvious one, yes. but before that, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So I, I think that people have got to realize that it's a pretty um, risk-free process until you lock and engage. Once you've locked and engaged, well, you've you've agreed to it now. Get it done. Um, but uh, the concept of selling or the concept of buying is is premeditated one or two years before. It's heavy shit. Um, so I, I think once you've actually decided to exchange, and what we're talking about this morning is that period between signing a contract, buying it, or selling it, which is the same thing at the same time, to so when you actually get the keys. Um, it's yeah you you just get your stuff organized finance is probably the biggest michael i think that's the probably you know but if you as a buyer if you can get that finance organized before you've signed that contract you're 99.999 percent there yeah and do you just want to talk just for a, a couple seconds regarding how settlement actually works at the very end with who does it the lawyers or the banks like what what's the old way and what's the new way through uh the digital platform just how it technically works the actual process of settlement yeah, so look, there's a, um, it's, a, it's, a it's technically a title transfer. Um, so it, the, tr the title, uh, Land Titles Office um, is the office that's responsible for reg registering the owners of land in Australia. So um, you, can t you can inquire with them who owns land um, and uh, they hold the register. So to get that regis register, you actually, the land titles office requires a front page of the contract, uh, and they also re require that front page of the contract to be stamped that your duties have been paid for the transfer. It's called stamp duty. So what happens on the day is the lawyers will organize a representative to meet in the city. Um, the lawyer of the seller and the lawyer of the buyer have their own representative. They generally, there's a, there are settlement rooms in land titles office in the city where they can meet. I believe some banks have settlement rooms as well. So they actually physically meet and they physically pass over checks. And they physically pass over the title and the, the transfer of the title. That's known as settlement. Then they actually book that in on the day before or two days before. So it's normally in an afternoon, 2.30, um, around that sort of period, 3.30 or it's normally in the morning around sort of 10 30 11 30. that's when they generally book in settlements for purchases solicitors and and uh, seller solicitors to meet and that's what had that's the old-fashioned way of transferring a title of a property from a purchaser to a seller now there's a new new method now which is pexa um where it's all managed digitally uh believe it or not it only it only got off the ground within 12 months ago um, and now they're, now they're doing that title transfer and not physically meeting any longer. But in essence, they're doing the same thing digitally.
Yeah, and another thing just to remember, guys, um, there's a dip, there is a difference from when it technically settles, either physically or digitally, and when the buyer can get the keys to the property. A lot of buyers aren't aware of this. And a real estate agent and office needs to receive the order of agent from the solicitors confirming settlement has taken place, not just a phone call saying, yeah, it's done. Neither or yeah. of the agent. I believe now with Pexstar, that's almost simultaneously and very quick. I know in the past, unfortunately, some lawyers took hours to do it and you had buyers yeah. knocking it all going, I want my keys, I want my yeah. keys. It settled, it settled. The truck, Look, the truck, the truck. It's done, it's done. Us trucks here. Yep. So, but that, uh, that's a wrap. Um, that's a wrap. Thank, thank you. And also, um, thanks to everyone last night. We had over 100 uh, people and I think it was about 40, 50 groups. Yep. Probably more like 150 people, considering how many people in groups and offices and stuff. We had our event last night, which was uh, Kiss and Tell, so how to kill it on social media, and um, and basically it was uh, it was a cracker event. So it went well. A bit nervous on our end. We'd never run anything like that before, but you got to have a go. What's Brad saying? Uh, regarding uh, order of the agent, I believe it's just from the one of the landlord, one of the solicitors. You just need the order of the agent. Either I yeah. believe generally the. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, everyone. We'll be back. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Love you. Say bye.